Welcome to Discretion Advised. My name is John Hill, and I am here with Bear Mark McNamara. Uh, hi, how are you? Good. Am I I'm pronouncing glad you your name through, right? Yep, you wor- <laughs> worked through that stroke, Daddy. <laughs> stroke Daddy, uh, my new persona. I, I feel like I haven't caught up with you in so long. Catch me up. What's going on in your life? Where are we? What are we doing? You had an earthquake in New York. Are you alive? Jesus Christ. I actually didn't feel a thing. I wish I had. Mm. I've never felt an earthquake. And then I texted Joseph and he's on a flight to Miami. He's like, yeah, I felt it. I'm like, you're on a flight. In the air? <laughs> Lie. <laughs> I'm like, what? The, you felt the earthquake on a plane? Okay, girl. Now, you what's hear that? that? What the, I don't know. Buildings are falling, apparently, left and right. The, Pigeons the, are looking for new homes. The irony, you know, everyone makes fun. Everyone in New York makes fun of people in L.A. And the irony, if if L.A. remains intact and New York were to be decimated by an earthquake, I not that I would laugh, but I would go. Oh, I'd giggle. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. I don't wish any destruction on anyone. But it's just so funny. We the, the, we're all so afraid out here of being leveled at any second. It's just crazy. I would never have thought. Apparently, there is a big tectonic zhuzh happening in you know tri-state are area, moving. so be careful get out I, of there it seems like this and then the taiwan just had that big earthquake the like, taiwan what the fuck is going on with all these natural disasters and then like the clips people are saying it's like I, I, by time this airs tbd if we're dead god's like mad. that's what's happening we, we god is angry that the gays are grooming everyone and the trans people are you know mm-hmm. running amok and so he's He's punishing us with earthquakes and floods and fires and famines, hunty. I'm shook. I'm shook. Literally. Um, do you have a message to uh, the new civilization, John? Who finds this tape after we're all gone? Girl, just quit while you're ahead. Just quit. Go back. Don't listen to our try. full archive at discatpop.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Patreon is still around, go sign up for it. Thank you. Oh, we have a big announcement. We'll be making it later today Ooh. with Diego Sanz and Jay Rodriguez are going to be here. We're talking about straight eye for the queer guy. But going back to like natural disasters and all dead, like when you die, do you want to be cremated, buried? Like, What do you want to do? Oh, gosh, I think about this from time to time. Well, first things first, I want, did you read about the girl? This is something in the news this week about the girl who was so severely depressed. She unalived herself she was perfectly healthy it was listen it's a new york post headline not to make light of the subject very serious subject but in amongst the headlines of like taylor and travis blah blah blah, woman kills herself because she was so depressed and then i clicked around and this is not about her someone else but like you know there is this thing where you can rent this suicide box in switzerland if you choose to end your life you can oh have you can rent this pod <laughs> Sorry, on like a, be- a beautiful lake or a beautiful vista in front of the alps you push a button and in 30 seconds you've chosen to end your life how you no. want to do it so i feel like if i were to get a horrible disease i would like like terminal bad it ain't good i would make some arrangements i would get my shit to switzerland and i would Go out peacefully in this gorgeous no. looking pod. No. And then as as far as what I want done with my body. Okay, there's a couple of things I've been looking at. Number one, last week there's this one where you can wear the mushroom suit and your body becomes part of the earth. I don't need no mushrooms eating me alive with, you know. Although that's probably what would happen if I was in a casket. I don't want to be in a casket six feet under. I think I want to get burnt to a crisp, mm-hmm. made into ashes, and then I want to go to the ocean. Like, no. did someone just what is that? Oh, a dog. I think that I just want to be uh, made into ashes, and then I want to go into the uh, ocean or blasted into space like the woman and her cat last week. No. You? No. It put me in a case somewhere in case science catch ups and evolved, and I can be brought back by some computer and be part of the LGBTQ AI. Like, that's what I want to do. That's my plan. Period. Put you in a case somewhere. So mm-hmm. keep you. Pro- co- uh, like uh preserved you want to be preserved Mm -hmm. i can be brought that's gonna cost you there's a new movie called problemista with uh julio torres and tilda swinton which i saw and it is about that exact thing people paying the service to like keep their body alive just in hope science is able to reconstitute it later and it's costly and it doesn't necessarily always 
you know, you don't really know if the world's going to be better if you wake up 300 years or anything like that. And what if everyone, like, what if you, you think you're going to look so preserved and snatched, but what if, you know? I'll need new clothes, but it's fine. I like to shop. Yeah. I don't like, I don't mind that idea. I would like to be uploaded to the cloud, although I probably already am. People say that AI is just like ripping all of us off and like. Oh, you're definitely AI already. For I sure. Wish. I wish. Look at that beautiful skin. He's not here. He's oh LGBTQ God. AI. Y'all, my skin is peeling and flaking. I got a chemical peel again. Uh, and I'm right at the height. I look like sunburnt. You do look really red. I just I thought that was know. a filter, but that's that's you, huh? It's not a filter. I Oof. also... Painful. It's about to... Scarface. It's about to, uh, yeah. But it looks nice. It's just, it's a... It's, it's red. It's a bold color. Mm-hmm. Bold hmm. color for spring. What's well, a pulse? It's a floral. He's wearing a floral face. That's right, and it um, will fall off pretty soon. But when it falls off, get ready. It's over for you, hoes. When it falls these... off, it's all over. That's right. Uh, but while you're still alive, head over to NakedSword.com and check out Global Entry Scotland. That is now live on NakedSword.com. And I just got back from Puerto Rico filming Global Entry Caribbean. We had guys from Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Cuba. And let me tell you this, uh, Cuba, or sorry, Puerto Rico is very beautiful, mm. but it's still kind of recovering from Maria. So mm. sorry, Trump, those paper towels you threw didn't quite help, you dipshit. What a, asshole. What a dumb shit. But beautiful country, uh, beautiful island, a uh, couple run-ins with the cops, nothing too wild. We got there and did a beautiful, beautiful movie. So check that out. Uh, check out Global Entry Scotland now, and soon Global Entry Caribbean. Also... Another little plug. While I was in Puerto Rico, I met with PJ, who's the owner of Fire Island. Now, I have been holding firm with that I'm not going to go back to Fire Island this summer and do a weekly show. I stead I held fast on that, but he did say, come out there. So I will come out there for a few times this summer and nice. do uh, the party on like big holidays. So our first one's going to be May 23rd in Fire Island. We'll be I there will with- be there. Will you? Yes. Work. Okay. So we'll be out there with the housewife, TBD, and a couple porn stars. First show, May 23rd. One last plug to go, wherenasty.com. We have been saying this for episodes and episodes, but has yet- <laughs> to be put in the pod so go to wherenasty.com i'm moving i'm cleaning out the closet so all porn paraphernalia you've ever wanted clothes that your porn stars had worn in scenes script memorabilia it's all there on wherenasty.com new items every week so go check that out if you want a little piece of porn history um john how do you end a hookup like say you're ready to go you're ready mm. to come you want to stop how do you let them know? All right, let's wrap it up. I don't hook up enough. I really wish I had more, like, I, I have, I, I don't ever have an issue where I'm annoyed that it's taking too long or something like that. I, I naturally am able to just, I don't like, if someone's, at, I, I don't like someone at my house and I want them to leave. So I never, I always travel. Yeah. I was, and then I just go. After we wrapped in Puerto Rico, I had a little visit that I went to go to. And I was like, it's taking for fucking ever and I would like to go. <laughs> and so I was just like, what do you do? Like look down and be like, this is so fun still. Like, no, like, how do I get out of this situation? You just say like, oh, so like, oh girl, I wish I could stay long, but I really got to split. I and really got to spit. <laughs> or that, and you know, yeah, just hmm. end it however you want, get out of there. Yeah, the person would probably want you to anyway. No, they wanted to keep going and keep the buffet open. And I was like, come on. Like, that's yeah. the Sizzler closes at some point. Yeah, it's like on, and just like that, they were talking about how do you, if you're nervous about a confrontation or anything like that, you just take control of the situation and you say what you need and whatever they respond with is their business. Give it up to God. That's right. Uh, I also had to give it up to God this week. I texted you as it was happening. Uh, I got new insurance, so I went to a new doctor and did like the whole mm. exams of everything. And they say to me, here's these two swabs, go into the bathroom and swab your anus with it. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Every time my doctor gives me the option, he's like, you can, you want to just do the swab yourself? Because apparently it just needs to go in one inch and it's not that bad. 
and I hate oh. doing it. I hate doing it, but because I I cheat and I don't want it to go up an inch. As we know, I don't like a whole lot of stuff up my butt, and it's especially like a little pokey. It's like pokey. It's not around. It's like a little itty bitty. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a tiny little Q tip. Yeah, but it's pokier than a regular Q tip, even pointier. It's pokier. And, it's like the one they stick up your nose. Yeah, I don't like it. So I look and I go, oh god, like how far is one inch? And like I'm not measuring. I just go till it. I can't handle it. I swizzle it around. So in the back swizzle. of my mind, I think like, should I be having the doctor really do this? Um, well, she didn't even give me that option. She didn't want to see any of my slit ocean circle. So I texted John. I was like, is like, is there supposed to be poop on this? Like, how far do I need to go? <laughs> what did you say back? Said, There's not supposed to be poop, but there could be poop. Like, they don't care. Also, it just goes in that water, in the little antibacterial water, and then it smooshes around. And then they take that water, and they test the water. And I think, you know, they're just testing for... It's not like a thorough blood test. They're just testing for like, is there or isn't there? Actually, don't. Yeah, is there? Are, or isn't you got really worms know. or not? Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what they're even checking with that shit. I think it's an STD thing, right? Well, it's not pregnancy. That's for sure. Um, did you see the new Beetlejuice trailer? I did. Do you have a problem with it, like I do? No, I didn't have a problem with it but i don't also expect anything from any sort of reboot ever i mean i loved it but my one complaint is i am kind of sick of using these old songs slow down to a sexy like mm. vibe for nostalgic effect like mm. i want us to move past doing that it's like what's the every example? ghostbusters did it uh the first one that really did it was um What's that one with the grays? Not Grey's Anatomy. Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. They did the Beyonce song, Slow Down, make it, uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, oh, no, no. And then ever since then, it's like they take these old songs and they mm -hmm. slow them down. And so now they do the the whole, what, a Harry Belafonte song mm -hmm. for Beetlejuice and like slow it down and make it sexy for a nostalgic effect. And I'm like, this happens like every fucking rebooted movie. Stop it tell you i sometimes kind of like it i think i'm over it i'm over it just like i'm over the track suits on traders australia that there was a point in time for those track suits i don't want to see them being worn i'm not into them i'm really disappointed in the traders australia season two it is i haven't started yet so dumb uh, they're I all it's so great. dumb it's not it's definitely by far the low rent version of all the traders i've ever seen <clears throat> Season one was good. I feel like they lost the budget for season two, and it's really kind of booty. But Hannah's Hannah Hannah Ferrier, who's on this show, she's on it, so that's fun. But I haven't got through it all yet. But it's not keeping my. There's no camp. There's absolutely no mm. camp in the Australian version this season, and I love that that element. But yeah, I've heard it was great. I need to. You're the first person I heard that didn't like it. The UK one, which yeah. you saw before me, loved. I know. Brilliant. Yeah. Australia is just so, they're all so dumb um, this season. They're just not, they're not there. Mm. Um, also, I thought UK versus the world, Hannah Conda should have n not won that lip sync against Marina Summers. She should have won it, but I'm glad Tia Coffee won. I know you have no idea who I'm, what I'm talking about, but the gals will know. Yeah, I am watching Drag Race America. Well, kudos, Mama, for saying that, for spilling. Mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> We're talking um, straight things today. So I made a little list of things that I think gay people, gay men can do that straight people can't. Do you want to hear it and yeah. tell me if I'm wrong? Yeah. Um, things that gay people can do, but straight people, straight men cannot eat lollipops or a gay, popsicle. I don't gay. think straight men can really do that. I'm trying to picture the last time I saw a straight man trying to eat a lollipop. I don't remember one. I yeah. can, I know my straight. I have a straight friend who can eat a popsicle. I've seen a straight guy eat a popsicle. Fine. I would love to see that. They're not sucking it. They're just like eating it for the <laughs> like delicious, refreshing, icy juice. Um, number two, pick a female character in a video game. Right. Straight Agreed. men aren't doing that. Agree. I'm always picking Sonya in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Uh, exfoliate. Some of these guys out here have girlfriends that force it on them. Like, 
they they're trying at least and and it's mm-hmm. big business these guys who are like gay baiter fitness uh models they're always doing get ready with me i'm doing my exfoliator and like they think it's part of like the grooming because they want to sell shit and like use my code for saint ives apricot scrub 10 percent off what when you shower what's your order of events oh i get everything wet Work. and then i let the water like go just like and then I get in the water. <laughs> no, I get everything wet. And then I get, I let the water spray my pits for a really long time to just like wash them and prep them for the amount of soap I'm going to put in there. Okay. Then I take a, um, I spread my booty cheeks to the stream and I let the booty, the water just like spray up in the booty crack. Get that then spackle out. I get everything wet. And then I get a, uh, Irish spring or a zest or a coast or a dial antibacterial deodorant soap. Antibacterial I, is important. And I get in those pits before this is again, I'm not even starting. I get in there and I just do a, a lather of the b- soap bar to skin contact. And then, then I get the shower poof and I put the soap all in that, get that really wet and lathery. And then I scrub from head to toe uh, back of the neck, bottom of the feet. And I re- and then, and then I rinse the poof out and then I put Dr. Bronner's eucalyptus in there, get another big lather up. And again, I get into those pits. I get under the balls and I do up the booty crack, head to toe, top of the head, bottom of the feet. And then I do a full rinse and then I take a charcoal soap bar and I do another round of the pits. And then I do an exfoliator. I rinse that off and then I do a pore perfecting cleanser and then I rinse that off. And then I do the pits one more time. Poof, mama. (laughs) He's poof daddy. (laughs) Honey. Wow. Good for you. Um, Mm -hmm. Speaking of poof daddy, I think I saw his jet in the Caribbean. I know that was like word that he was down there. Me and Thomas saw a black identical jet to him flying over our house because we were at the end of a fucking runway. Okay. So I think I might know where he is. So FBI, get a hold of me. Um, do you want to move on to thought topics or we don't have time? Uh, let's move on. I'm getting the thumbs up from I Cam did not print them out or read them. Today. I have them, honey. Let's, okay, good. Listen, I don't we'll, we'll know what do, they are. We'll do a cold read. One good. of the headlines is Lily Allen saying Beyonce covering Dolly Parton's Jolene is quote unquote very weird. And then when you read down, she says it's very weird that you'd cover one of the most successful songs in that genre. I don't think... Um, and then I guess her co-host of her podcast said, I don't think the Jolene one is good. I feel like Beyonce could have done a bit more with it or maybe picked something that was a little less big to cover. This is a stupid take. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. No one asked. Sorry, Lily. Bye. Um, and also it's funny. Ugh, yeah. Like you think Dolly Parton cares? Whatever she did. No. Beyonce's album is. I don't un- care. So Dolly Parton doesn't care. Untouchable. It's so good. I love the whole album. I think it's so great. Yeah. Lily, go smile somewhere. Yeah. Well. Like any discourse, like to think that you have anything to say about something that brilliant is such bullshit, you know, like to I make believe it- in like sharing and giving opinions because mm-hmm. we may not like everything everyone does. But like to go out and be like, well, this is yeah, there's a line. Um, Jill Zarin, our friend from the pod has fired back after Below Deck fans have branded her a spoiled brat. Now you were on Below Deck. Let me ask you something. When you're on there as a chartered guest do you feel pressure to perform in any way do you think she was acting like a spoiled brat or do you think this was really fly on the wall reality i there was a member of our group that went that was doing performative like drama and i put it into that like i took our mics off and i went and had a conversation like let's just enjoy this trip it's not free we do have to pay to be on this boat so let's have a vacation if they want to use pieces of it for the show great but we're not here i'm not here to be a a star on a as a guest no one cares about us this show is about them this show is about the workers we're just like the people so i think that is just who truly who who she is i had a great time with her when she came to fire island she was not she was not in need of a lot when i was there with her she she was very easy to handle but i i think that i watched the show with her on it and i think that was generally her but i think that the barbie girl the one that complained most about her i think she's a cunt so uh, what you can't say someone's a cunt she's a tv character i don't know if she's a cunt in real life but her character on the show she's a cunt and i think she voted for trump she gives me that vibe 
A surgeon has revealed the one body part that indicates penis size. So we've always talked about oh, hands and feet. Um, and what do you say? Well, I I think I've heard this. I know it's the nose, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, they found the Look nose at John's lanes. big nose. I know I do have a big nose. But a cute one. Um, a pastor is saying his career as a gay adult film star has earned him over a million dollars, but ruined his life. Wait, a pastor? Like a church person? Uh, yeah, he's a Christian preacher making money by, um, uh, he used to perform under the name Rocco Reed. He quit the adult <gasps> film industry in 2013. He's I know who that is. His new book, Seven Lies That Will Ruin Your Life. His transition from triple X star to pastor. This is what his book's about, detailing his deep discontentment with adult entertainment. At his peak, he was filming up to 25 scenes per month and earned more than a million dollars. He worked for a total of seven years. Rocco Reed, I think I know who this guy is. Big guy, right? <laughs> He's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah he used to work for men.com a lot uh all right well listen everyone feel free to live in your truth or your lies yeah yeah well listen he wrote a book i'm sure it's very interesting i'm surprised you read a book huh? um that's it for thoughty toppies unless you have anything else on your mind no the, i'm shook and shocked by that last little tidbit um we're talking all about straight eye for the queer guy today we have diego sands coming up next with a big announcement for the discretion advised listeners and then later we will be joined by jay rodriguez and then we're gonna pit john jay and diego against each other to find out who is the queerest of them all so we'll be right back with a big announcement Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I am Mark McNamara, joined by the beautiful, the graceful John Arthur Hill and Pete. And here we are. We know we teased a big announcement today. And to help us announce it, the one, the only porn star international and dipshit himself, Diego Sands. Hi, Diego. <laughs> Hello. <Yes. laughs> How are y'all doing? Just fantastic. Good. So what's well, going on? What's can... happening? <laughs> Not much, just living the dream <laughs> down here in Brazil and um, just li living the dream. How are you guys? What do you miss You're about living in the US? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, I don't know, the healthcare. <laughs> uh, nothing. There's nothing that would make me leave. There is nothing that would make me go back. I can see why. Where are you left. originally from? Uh, I'm actually from Sao Paulo. I'm from the um, countryside, five hours outside of Sao Paulo. Are you um, are you doing some industrial vacuum cleaning, or is that a yeah. buzzsaw? Are you dismembering <laughs> a body while you're doing the podcast? <laughs> uh, I am. I'm going to tell them to stop, because we are under construction right now. Hold on. Oh. I'm back. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. And with that, let's make an announcement. So Discretion Advise <laughs> is going uncut. We have our spinoff show on Patreon. So patreon.com slash discadpod. It is going to be me and Diego Sands getting filthier than ever sharing this. I'll, I'll read the copy that Cameron wrote. Yikes. How about that? Sharing loads of our stories, intimately honest opinions, and we'll be getting dirtier and filthier than ever as we discuss all things gay, sex, porn, and personal. There are three tiers of love that you can join, so I'll learn all about that on our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash disadpod. We'll be doing weekly shows for you all. There'll be a chance to connect with us. Social media shoutouts, BTS videos, videos from Diego yelling at people. Um, all that is there for you to enjoy on patreon.com slash discadpod. Are you excited? Hot. Very. Yes. <laughs> now, John, you do a radio show with your ex. Do you have any advice for us on and we embark on this journey? Uh... No, yeah, I think it Don't helps. Do it. I think well, you, you you guys are already <laughs> friends, right? I mean, you're 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 already really close. I think it's like it's a natural thing. You guys already have a great rapport. It's not like you broke up because you hate each other. Well, unless, well. <laughs> you know, yeah. So uh, yeah, what, just listen uh, to each other, communicate. Do, Let someone me, drive the bus if they want to drive. Mm -hmm. Give me a do's and don'ts, at least one. 
Well, since it's Mark, I say don't. do don't. don't. <laughs> uh, when she's stoned, just let her do no, her mama. Thing. He gets more stoned than me. I'm like regular degular stoned. He is Stonehenge. All right. Well, Stone then in that case, I would. S- in that case, I would say <laughs> one of you should not. Both of you can be stoned at the same time. I, I think. No. I think. That's some well, of our best conversations. <laughs> some of our best conversations are were in his car stone. You think so? Is what I'm saying. Like, like you when you're stoned, it's you think you're fascinating and hilarious. I mean, when someone is smoking pot, they think they're really hilarious. It's not. It may make no sense. Try. Listen, you should try it once. Both get blitzed. See how it comes out. It'll probably be funny to listen to you guys cackle. But then, if you want to keep a conversation going, probably one of you is stoned and you take turns. Are you stoned right now? but okay diego i'm gonna have to start practicing (laughs) talking to you as diego again because i never call you diego so i'm gonna have to learn that all over again are you nervous because you're kind of a shy person are you ready to you've called me you called me diego just now yeah no but you've called me diego before like before before times yeah yeah and you got mad at me for that remember what was that one okay well (laughs) all right (laughs) it's off to a great start i can't wait (laughs) uh no i'm ex i'm um i'm I'm excited um i've always had we i've always been able to uh talk freely with uh mark and just feel very comfortable so i think it'll be fun to be able to chit chat and and see where it goes i don't know i i have no expectation yet all of the all of them so i'm excited that's perfect i'm excited because Good. i think that not a lot of people get to see like the real you and i think if it's yeah. just no. me and you having conversation people are going to finally be able to get in there open you up make you the bottom like make you know sp- spill it honey uh, mama kudos for saying that for sharing <laughs> but and that's what we're gonna yeah. do our very first episode we're getting very personal we're gonna ask each other 10 personal questions and then we're gonna give each other a little oral history of each other with a quiz and then the loser is gonna have to do a truth or dare so that is coming up and there'll be new episodes every monday again patreon.com slash disc pod maybe we should, should give we each other homework question? what well we have we have homework but well i'm i already did my homework Um, should we use or should we try one question you don't know one question i can think of a question yeah i haven't wrote them yet but go ahead do yours and i have seven of them no i have seven of them and you can choose from one to seven and then five you have to give me one of What? <laughs> okay. Mark. Oh God. Aside from N- and <laughs> names will not be mentioned. <laughs> Mark. Aside from an enema, what is the other weirdest thing you've shared with a model? I've shared an enema mm-hmm. with a model. No. I've never shared an enema with a model. Think. I will text it to you. Like, <laughs> when I'm, give some hints. Yeah. So, what was the situation? Yeah. Why did Mark need an enema? Exactly. What? Say what? What was the situation? You don't have to say names. Uh, describe the situation. No, because if I could describe a, a little island. Okay, a little island. Well, now, was Mark in need of an enema because he was sick? No, what Mark was, was uh... not in need of a. Mer- uh, 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 Mark actually sick. It was <laughs> a heroic act of Mark. To save the oh. scene. <laughs> okay, check your. <gasps> Wait, did they okay. use a water? Wait, did they use a water bottle? They used a water bottle as an enema, and then I drank from it. No, 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 no. I can't say it because otherwise everyone's like, "Oh my god!" So that scene, um, we were, we were in a, a location where we did not have a way to go to a pharmacy or anything or anywhere. I just kind of gave it. 
just check your WhatsApp and everything will come back to you. I checked my WhatsApp. I saw who you said, but I never shared an enema with this person. I'm, what are you talking about? Well, you've I, given yours. A water bottle. That person had a no. water bottle. No. <laughs> you told Rusty. Oh, sorry. He's fingering you. You told, uh, you told Rusty and me, like, we didn't have um anything and then at the um at the place we were i mean i'm not gonna get into like the whole well you we, yeah i'm so confused thing. by I this know. Know. <laughs> explain say what you're saying what because happened because mark uh, the model didn't have a um way to get ready and we thought like well okay. you should have gotten ready at the house because now okay. we're here in okay this doesn't place. matter what happened then and, and mark's what like then? i had a one that i used in my camera bag or like in one of the bags that we had props in and it's like I just so you, he let him borrow it yeah okay that's not that bad he let him borrow an enema i, I still <laughs> don't think this story is true or factual this is what you way, told us this is what you told us the way you're saying it makes it sound like someone used an enema and then mark stuck that used enema right. up his own but i don't and think that is not what happened <laughs> no but mark did share his and that's what i was saying aside from that what is the other weirdest I thing you shared with the model <laughs> none of this story is true <laughs> you're the one that said it i'm gonna get rusty uh, online and he will please. even prove oh my god okay anyways <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna we're talking about all about straight eye for the queer eye today. So let me ask you some straight questions that don't have to do yes. with water bottle enemas. Um, do you think that uh, relationship, like gay relationships, have different hurdles than straight relationships? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Um. I mean, I think um, for starter, I mean, like if you don't have a uh, a fear of coming out um, to your family, you don't go through that. You don't have those past, um, or even a fear of holding your partner's mm. hand in public or like showing affection in yeah, public to your partner. You know, mm. yeah, that also goes. I was even going to say a little bit even deeper. Like uh, sometimes uh, you don't have. A connection with your family like okay uh if one person has a difficult time coming out to their family they're a completely different person than the other one that came out to their family super easy um and sometimes this can create some conflict in the relationship like meeting the parents or you know uh getting a little bit closer with their family and at least i see that a lot here in brazil um with you know like, yeah that's true because I, for, I I hate to use this as an example, but uh, my little sister, she went out with uh, this one girl and her, the girl's still not out with her parents. And they it, it creates um, this, you know, uh, question or this conflict in your head of um, how am I going to present this person I like to my family to my parents like because i mean like yeah, in the end it's it's family but um it's hard for you to not feel comfortable bringing in someone that can always be a conflict in a relationship which is something that heterosexual people never understand like i have a hard time explaining it to a, a straight person i i don't even think a straight person would ever uh would ever get that uh maybe a guy will say oh you know it's not easy meeting the parent <laughs> like yeah because you're meeting the girl's parent but imagine a guy bringing another guy home for their uh homophobic father to meet or for their um you know um what's it called um, true it's true yeah. yeah so i do think do, I, I feel like straight people get it so easy <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if like, that's easier, but it's also you have the question of like, of two, if you're with like two guys or two women, like, is he the man I want to be with or the man I want to be? That's also something that you have to like dig into yourself when you're with somebody and like, what is it that is attracting that person to me? I think that goes away as you get older, at least it has for me, because when you're younger, you're trying to find your identity and you're attracted to the person you, you know, sometimes you want to emulate. But then after a while, like, that becomes so toxic if you're with someone that you just 
idolize mm -hmm. instead of someone who helps your life get better, complements your your life. I feel like I don't, ha I as I've gotten older, I haven't had to deal with that as much. I Do you think Except, that for you yeah. to be with someone, you have to uh, find someone that's like you I or someone that's completely different than you? I was talking to this about, about this with my stepmom, and she said, no, for a relationship to work, you need to find someone that is exactly like you. Because that's what's going to work in the long run, you know, because... In certain ways, in certain ways, know, but energy-wise, like, I need someone really go, go, go. chill. I can't have anyone, like, who's overly anxious or too, I want to go like, out. Dramatic. I want to go hiking. I want to do this. I want to do that. And if you're a person that's more, I need my own space. I like to be at home. Um, it doesn't work out on the long run. That's at least what she said. I don't know if I agree with but that. But then you don't want to end up like boyfriend twins. I've seen a lot of these boyfriends out here who are just carbon copies of each other. It is so freaky and so... But does it work? That. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we got to wrap up, though. <laughs> we got to wrap up. <laughs> but that's not it. Diego will be coming back at the end of the show to be going face-to-face, eye-to-eye with John and Jay on who's the queerest of them all right after we talk about right. more straight shit. So we, we will be right back with Jay Rodriguez to talk more straight eye for the queer eye. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Discretion Advice here with uh, Mark McNamara. Oh my God, Jay Rodriguez is here. Hi. Oh. Wait, John, I want to, John, how long do you think we go back? Okay, Jay is the first person I met in New York City when I first went there in 1999. I don't think it was even yep. 2000 yet. And I went to no. Don't Tell Mamas and mm -hmm. you were at the bar and I was in the cast of Miss Saigon and you were like, girl, that's yep. a big gig. And you were in Rent mm -hmm. and we were like, what's happening? Yep. And you knew friends in my cast. And I was like, I can't believe you remember that. I every always second, wondered if bitch, you remember that. Every second. And did you do the original workshops of hairspray or did you do hairspray later i did i joined in the out-of-town tryout pre-broadway for it. seattle okay. so uh yeah. yeah i you were the first person i met like literally the night That's i got there i went to don't tell mamas and there was jay at the bar i've known you for there that was were. like literally 25 years ago oh, yeah it's a it's a long time yeah. yeah and here we are and you don't you look even younger than you did that very night no, i'm gonna be sure. 45 and it's weird i'm trying to age up the uh, process but and, how am I older than you? I don't know. I'm a year older than you? Damn. Someone's yeah. lying and it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm born in, born in 79. I think we met in 2000-ish. Wait, if we met in 2000, then I should not have been at Don't Tell Mamas. But, you know, if you were at a show, they kind of turn a blind eye and let you into clubs and bars. It, well, it would have been an, a, a Monday night... It was, I thought it was 1999, but what, maybe it was 2000. Yeah. It could have been. And there I was with a little, you know, Bacardi diet. Like, hey. Yeah. And we were singing show <laughs> tunes. I loved sure meeting were. you. I, I remember thinking this, this guy is so cool. You were so encouraging. And I mean, I was like, I'm in my first show. I don't know what's going to happen. You were like, whatever, <laughs> keep going. And well, I know I'm sure people know this, but like, you were very tall. And yeah. I'm like five nine, so I was looking up at you like this. I'm like, you are, you have a great voice. You're tall. You're Broadway leading man style. This is the gig. And then we fucked. Yeah, <laughs> we did not. Did we you? Did not. No. 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 Mark was like, did you? <laughs> did you? I mean, me and Jay go way back to a couple of weeks ago at the Queer Tees, where oh. I finally met you in person. So I have yeah. to ask. I had to bring up what we talked about. Slit or circle. Yes. Mm. I haven't checked. I would. Am I'm gonna take. If I had to guess, I'm gonna guess circle. I think I was very surprised. It had me thinking when your conversation about slitter circle. I was like, wait, I don't know. I, it's a circle for sure. Because I feel like a slit. I would have had questions. Yeah, it's everybody's anatomy is different, but we welcome them all. Yes, that's right. I mean, I will go check after this interview. Yeah, yeah check and let us know. I'll Get a mirror. Back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I just, just color purple style and just, yeah, oh. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Can I go back? As we were preparing for this, I went back and checked all of your credits. And wow, you like have been, been around doing some. <laughs> you were in 93, you were in All My Children. And then 2005, One Life to Live. What tea can you spill on the soap opera world? Um... First of all, it's fast. Like they, especially the um, the the more soap soaps that have continued. Like in the early two thousands, they would give you a couple takes. My first soap was all my children, and 
Mean Girls star Jonathan Bennett, prior to Mean Girls, his scene was his first start day, and he went from, I think, being like a nine-year-old to being 16, like the character did, and they did it because they had a carve-out of like a turkey hand for Thanksgiving, and the mom is holding it, remembering, and then he puts his big hand over the little oh hand, God. and that's how they transitioned him. <laughs> the fun fact is, he was dating someone in the cast of Rent, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but... I knew him as, and so when I, <laughs> later years, as he did Mean Girls and a succession of straight roles, I was like, but y'all know he got the glitter, right? Like, Not I, the glitter. I was like, well, I, and so it was really fascinating to kind of see, but soaps are fast. I mean, the, the interesting thing is a lot of really great actors come from it. I think it's, if you're in New York, it's a rite of passage. And um, I don't know, I, I I'm, I, I don't want to disparage it, but it's definitely a different beast altogether. I did All My Children as well, and my scene was with two women. One was playing their mother, and they were the same exact age. It's that kind of stuff. I met Laura Bell Bundy on Guiding Light. She ran right Love up to me. She Laura was Bell like Bell. 18 at the time. Yeah, I did. I played a young dad who's who we were driving home for Thanksgiving, and we had to stop at the hospital because my wife went into labor prematurely. I had just buzzed my hair I, I was like literally just like crew cut playing the straight guy, like, you know, all sad that my wife is having his baby breach. Oh, Wild. damn. <laughs> and playing a drag queen on Broadway at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Balancing act. That's right. <laughs> you were also in uh, Gaga and Beyonce's telephone. Like what? Which is so wild. How, what happened when you got that call? Okay. So, real tea is that, um, so t 2003 VMAs. The Queer Eye guys, my cast, were the presenters for Best Female Music Video. So I'm around the same age as Beyonce, a couple years, but that's the same year Britney and Madonna kissed. I feel like my boys were more obsessed with finding Madonna backstage, mm. and I really felt like I had a moment with Beyonce backstage. Come to like a couple different events, I, we're literally backstage. She didn't have as many Wranglers. I'm like kicking with her a whole bunch wow. during the, the beginning stages of Queer Eye. So much so she asked us to surprise announce her at the Roxy. She did a pop-up show wow. um, and the gays are already turned. And so there they are on the dance floor shirtless with their bottle waters. And the Queer Eye boys come out the height of their fame. Uh, so we announced Beyonce and they lost their minds. Um, but yeah, so we always kind of maintained a, uh, like a nice backstage friendship relationship it's weird to think about being so social like where you'd see someone like that now because mm. at the time i didn't to me she was like this amazing singer that just come out of a girl group i was trying to do the same and so in my mind we were peers <laughs> we were not and uh so i had no fear and like we just were always just very cool with each other and so a couple years pass post queer i am in la and my agent called and they're like hey, can you get to Palmdale in two hours? Damn. I don't remember if it was Beyonce's team or Gaga's team had reached out and someone had pulled out of playing the reporter that day. And I was like, yeah, I was like, what's the, what do I, they're like, we can, they can't tell you anything because their script is top secret. Just come with anything from an MTV reporter to like evening news reporter with looks. I drove to Palmdale it was literally an isolated, that set is a real set. It's like a, a mm -hmm. gas station, a motel, a diner, blah, blah, blah. And there were three trailers, Gaga's trailer, Beyonce's trailer, and me and Tyrese split like a double banger. Wow. And it was so wild to be in this moment and like just chilling. And so I'm like, it's a couple years after, I haven't seen Beyonce in like four years, five years. So I'm sitting outside on a little director's chair. She just does the big dance scene with Gaga in the diner. She's sweaty, it's hot. It's She's walking her trailer and she's like, oh my God, hi. And she gives me this big hug while she's sweating. And I was like, maybe we are mm. friends. Like, are we friends? Uh, but wow. yeah, so that's kind of how that happened. And by the way, no script. They, the, the second AD or the person who's sort of wrangling the talent and making sure they're on set on time says to me, great, can we have your copy? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, your reporter copy. I was like, I haven't even seen a script. I don't know. So I get the script and they wanted me oh to God. write a what a reporter would say <laughs> should he actually be reporting on the scene of the crime. <laughs> I don't know that language. I called my friend, this guy named Brandon, who was a reporter in New York. And I was like, uh... Let's say two ladies did this. Oh my How God. How would you, I don't even think to this day that he knows 
that he basically wrote low key wow. that whole script. Like here at the scene of the crime, police are still trying to put the pieces together. What appears to be a mass homicide. Ah! Detectives on the like like. Oh, and he so remembers. It's wild. I do because I was like. <laughs> And by the way, I got there at like 11 a.m. I didn't shoot that until if you go back and watch the video, they kind of forgot. And I just like watched all day and they're like, oh, shoot, we need this pickup. And Jonas Ackerlin, the director, was like a fan of mine. And so he was like, let's just get it over here. If you look, it's literally Video Village behind me. Yeah. Like it's it looks like a whatever, but it's literally just a production set behind me. Like it's, a, wow. But they put all these graphics to kind of disguise it. But yeah, it's two seconds and it was really fun. Damn, wow. that is a long process for a video. Now, wonder we never got yeah. the Renaissance visuals. She's still oh, doing them. I mean, literally. <laughs> and by the way, I don't think, I think I was paid as an extra. And I want to say I was paid like $200 because I think they were... I think they were unaware that I would be speaking, whoever did like payroll, whatever. So um, if God got Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, invoice yeah. Beyonce today. Is it too late? <laughs> no. Interest, interest, honey. You made yeah. her. <laughs> it was so funny, but it was a really cool moment because I, like seeing people like that, that did not have tons of security or like, uh, you know, kind of like a, a camp around them of people, they were very accessible. Everybody was like, these are the best dancers in the world. Everybody was like on the gig, but it felt like I was a fly on the wall to like magic. And it didn't feel as protected as I would have assumed. Everybody was kind of just around and it was, it was interesting. Yeah. I bet the person who bailed th that day feels so Kicking stupid. Themselves. Kicking themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But good. Done. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good get for me. And now you, <laughs> you mentioned Queer Eye and mm -hmm. I'm going to ask, okay, so Rolling Stone said that JVN has been quite the diva on set. Who so mm -hmm. we we love a diva. So as long as they're not disrespecting anybody. Who sure. who was the diva of your cast? I mean it, I love when female music artists get asked this question because they always say similar they give a similar first answers which is well it depends how you define diva. Um and I feel like none of my cast were mean spirited. Um and here's the difference between my cast and the new cast that people don't consider. We worked consecutively for mm. three years. So we had one 1980s RV with five guys, hair, makeup, wardrobe, and the driver. That was where we got to like relax. You were lucky if you found like a table to like perch on. Like we were on top of each other. So the idea of infighting did not cross our minds because we could not escape each other. The new cast worked together for mm. isolated months at a time, and then they don't have to like be around each other in such close proximity for maybe another year or two. Mm. So it's a different vibe. In my cast, I would say Kyan would would comedically say he was the diva. Um, he had more of like a uh, an unspoken comedic writer that we would make fun of. Like he always liked, uh, like was it uh, like a soy milk latte in the morning? Yeah. We we felt the demands were so comedic and long that he'd be the one out of all of us to develop his own religion called Kyanetics, yeah. where everyone got a soy latte upon entry. Um, but yeah, I would think I would think Kyan. If you asked, we do these stage shows. We're actually doing uh, another one in June on my birthday, June twenty second. I don't think it's announcing next week. But we do these stage shows, and they're really fun. I thought it'd just be like Comic Con. It's not. It's like a whole production, and uh, and I think that question comes up, and I think all four guys are like, "Kyan, want to feel this one?" <laughs> um, but it's funny now. But it was never like I wish that you would think with five gay guys that we would have fucked or like whatever. I tried in the beginning. I definitely tried to get with Kyan. <laughs> But I think he was like, "You're so cute, little boy." Like I was, you know, <laughs> twenty three, and like, you know. The wow, diva's always so the groomer. Right. <laughs> right. I'm from the era where gay men were grooming. That meant shaving with the grain. Literally. You know what I mean? Like, it was that vibe. Yeah. Now, tell us about the big gay cabaret. So, uh, Ginger Minge, who everyone knows and loves from Drag Race, and her partner CJ have done fruit, fruit Wine Productions. So, they basically started bringing queer talent to... They're starting in Chicago. And um, it's my show. I always call it like the Rated R Glee version of my life, where I can spill tea and sing Top 40 and Broadway songs. I Even my friends in LA, when I do the shows like in Palm Springs, San Francisco, and they come out, they're like, I... How long have I known you? And I didn't know any of that. I mean, I, I spill a lot of queer IT, including the big question, were all the straight guys really mm. straight? Were they? 
Mm-hmm. No. Really? And did you time, fuck it? Did you straight? Do you, or- do you, yeah, so I feel like with John's relationship with Andy Cohen, this did come out on a 10-year reunion special that Andy wow. hosted. And I told Andy, I just watched What Happens Live in the fall. I told Andy the real tea. So I'm going to tell you all the real tea. The truth of the story is, when you do a show like that, season one, you're very well behaved, just like any job. Mm-hmm. You are like crossing all your T's, dotting your I's. The more the show progresses or your job, you get more comfortable, a little lax with the rules. We were not supposed to talk to the straight guy unless the cameras were rolling. Traditional reality, save it for when they're rolling. We had a straight guy in a later season who might be a little more bi, who knows, but he was straight and definitely not single. And we were, um, the shooting for Queer Eye on our version was Tuesday, you drive around for like an hour and a half talking about who it is. You show up Tuesday morning, knock, knock, knock. We have not met him. The producers have. We go in and we, the first hour is called de-straightening. We go through every corner to try to find the most embarrassing stuff, make a moment. Then we set up a plan and two people take him shopping and they go to one location on Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. That was me. I got, I, I, we did the whole thing. It was like me and maybe Carson. I can't remember, but that end of day, I was like trying to make plans for the club. Cause I found out since I'm shopping on Tuesday, I don't work again until Thursday. So I'm going out and I was going to a club called Kane, a straight club. Here's where the story gets interesting. The straight guy overhears me say this and he's like, Hey, he's like, I want to come. And it was like a further season. So I was like, Oh yeah, you can come like blah, blah, blah. blah. We're meeting at my place at 10 30. I live 10 blocks from the club. He's like, all right, great. So he shows up at my apartment Mm -mm. at 930, which is an hour before in a white tank top, cargo shorts and flip flops. Now, you know, there's no straight club in New York that you can get into with that attire. And I knew he knew that. So I had one of those like intercoms where you could see who's at the door. And I'm like, So, all right. So I let him up. I show him to the bar. I lived in a loft at the time. So I was like, hey, I'm going to go shower. My friends are going to be here a little bit. So, but I'll be really, really fast. Here's the TV, blah, 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 blah. Here's the bar. Make yourself a drink. Get comfortable. And I'm thinking, do I have clothes for him? Like, how do I address the situation? I shower. I mean, 15 minutes max. My clothes are outside. So I brought in like underwear and like a tank top. And I was wearing a towel when I came out. I had a big bookshelf on one side and a closet on the other. And that was the divider of this 1400 square foot loft. When I came out of the bathroom, he turned the corner very excited to see me boom and gr- grabbed under my towel and was like let me help you out with that bro oh my god and i immediately had such panic because remember at the time it was a very popular show i'm a rule follower and i realized in this moment like we still have to finish this episode yeah. i thought what do i get fired like if this yeah. continues hr bitch so, Right. So I was like, you know, so I, I kind of shut shit down, but you can't forget that it happened. And then I had to finish the episode. You know what I mean? And send him off to... What did he say about it? Did he ever talk to you about it? We, he, we, st- he, well, um, we definitely what, what? got a, a message or two uh, throughout the years saying, hey, you in New York, I definitely want to help you out. Help you out was the code. Help you out. I wonder if anyone's watching this, like, if you've heard that before, is that a thing straight guys say or DL guys say? Like, I had never want to help you out. Maybe that's the framing you can use Mm. so it's not gay. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Right. I guess. But yeah, so no, I don't think they all were. They were straight identifying, but I think in action, some of them danced gently outside of those lines. It's a spectrum. It wasn't even a little kissing, a little, like, a... Little. No kissing, but there was some, you know, a grabage. Uh, a grab. A grab. There, there was a grabage and an offerage of uh, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a of that nut? How many oh. licks did it take? I think forty six. Okay, no. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right, Jay. Yeah, where can yeah. people find you and follow you? 
Man, I am on the socials at J-A-I Rodriguez. You can find me there. You can also find me. You know what? You, you really inspired me. Uh, I've been I've been such a fan of the pod and your honest conversations. I like to think I'm really sex positive. Y'all are really challenging my <laughs> theories on that. But I think also to John, specifically you, I think as we get older, like I don't remember men in their 40s that I looked up to that were as candid about oh, sexuality shit. because remember, it was like two decades ago. People were a little hush-hush. So I do also have a Patreon, and one of the tiers <laughs> is my thirst trap tier that, let's just say, Mark could direct. Get it, bitch. Um, you need yeah. help? You, you, you need help? Let me help you out? When I'm in when I'm in New York, <laughs> maybe you can help me yes. out with that, bro. Mark, I can help you out, photographer. I can help you out, bro. <laughs> Honestly, I would say it's one of the most empowering things I've ever done because, you know, I'm not, like, creating adult content per se. It's definitely teetering on Instagram safe, but I feel like I after, and I think a lot of queer people can relate to this when you're young and maybe you don't feel like you were, mm -hmm. you came into yourself and mm -hmm. sometimes more your body, your skin, your voice, your sexuality in your forties. Yeah. And that was back in the day when they send you out to pasture. Now it's not really like that. So I'm sort of having a moment of that exploration and fans are there to witness it. The Patreons like patreon.com backslash J Rodriguez world J A I, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, honey. I love it. Give all right, he's not want. going anywhere. He'll be right <laughs> back when we will be finding out who is the queerest of them all. John, Jay, or Diego, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I'm Mark McNamara. But wait, Diego, this is going to be your job soon. So why don't you welcome us back from the break? Go for it. You're on, oh. kid. And welcome back to this Christian advice. <laughs> I don't know. I'll practice. So, that was Great. pretty good. Well so done. far, so good. All right. We're joined by Jay Rodriguez, Diego Sands, and of course, my good Judy Fruity, John Hill. And we have been talking somewhat about some straight <laughs> shit today. So now I want to find out who is the queerest of them all. I have seven questions in front of me, and I'm Yikes. going to mark down who gets a point for each question. I'm going to read the question, and I just want you, if you know it, scream it out. I don't want to have to go down the list of getting everyone's <laughs> okay. answer. Okay. If you know the answer, scream at the top of your lungs, all right? Uh, Seven questions. All right. Oh, my God. Question number one. Stonewall is in which New York City neighborhood? Uh, Greenwich, Greenwich Village. Village. <laughs> oh, John said it first, <laughs> but did. I will give Raise you a hand. point for telling <laughs> me what year the riots were. 1969. 69. Oh my oh. God, John. <laughs> he just has a better I was, wife. I, I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> John threw the first stone. Mm -hmm. Brick. Brick. All right. Taylor Swift mentions Glad in which of her songs? Oh my God. Is it the one with the music <laughs> video the with one. all the queer eye guys? Yes. <laughs> just calm down. Just calm. You, you need, need to calm, calm down. down. You need to calm Weird. down. Wow. Yeah. John, you're just, you're so homosexual. I three know. points. Yeah. All right. Question number three. Cindy Lauper wrote the music for Kinky Boots based on whose book? Harvey Firestein. Oh my God. Harvey well Firestein, done. who was on this podcast. <laughs> All right. John has four points and Jay and Diego are straight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's still anyone's game because there's well there's questions left <laughs> <laughs> which famous cnn reporter came out in 2012 anderson cooper uh, no there you go Word. jay's on the board homosexual Word. diego gay for pay over there <laughs> <laughs> all right question number five what oh sorry which is the first country that introduced same-sex marriage. New Zealand? I thought no. it was Spain. Philippines? Italy. No. <laughs> Italy? Hawaii. Are you kidding? Hawaii. Not Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> United States. What country? <laughs> um, um, it begins Ze with an N. New not New Zealand? No. Netherlands? Norway. Yes. Who oh. said Netherlands? Diego. Diego. Wow. On the homosexual. I knew it. I you suspected all along. Fag. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus point. What year was it? Mm, 20 2006 no uh seven no nope. <laughs> anybody else know any years no. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no <laughs> uh, all right it was 2018 no. 2001 <laughs> oh whoops <laughs> all yeah. right second to last question what does platinum gay mean 
You've never been with a woman. And even come out of the vagina. Yes, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, yes, gold, star gold star would be yeah. you natural no vaginal puss. birth, and then yeah, yeah. platinum games. Platinums, you've C sex. You've been nowhere near yes. it. Yes, I never. All right, that. we only have one question left. John has four points. Jay has two points. Diego has one point. This question is worth seventy nine points. Oh, Qu- question number seven. What does snowballing mean? Oh, that's when you get the cum in your mouth and then you pass it back and forth. Said like a true professional. John, you are correct. John Hill is the queerest of them all. Oh God! All right, go clean out your mouth. Sorry. Have you ever snowballed? No. Wait, oh, please. How am I not? Red? Wait yeah. a minute. Isn't that simply like if you perform oral to completion and kiss after, or does it have? I mean, because technically, some is going back. A little. We all snowballed a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Diego, help me out. <laughs> Don't shame me for snowballing. I just need maybe, the answer to the question. Maybe some of us have snowballed, but you've built a whole snowman. Is that oh, called yeah. ice? That's different. Is that called ice sports? <laughs> like, what do we... If, it's not quite a it's water sport. The Winter Olympics. That's right. The Winter yeah. Olympics. <laughs> the Winter Olympics. All right. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Thank you everyone, for Thank listening. You. That is our show for today. Make sure you follow us on all the socials <laughs> at Discat Pod. That's D-I-S-C-A-D-P-O-D. YouTube, wherever it TikTok, is. TikTok. All, all right. Everywhere. All the things. All the things. And don't forget to follow us on Patreon.com slash Discat Pod for Discat Pod Uncut, starring me and Diego Sands. Thank you so much. Go see Jay <laughs> and the Big Gay Cabaret. Yeah. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Bye, hoes. Bye. Bye.